Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the latest calls by British businesses for the government to negotiate a better Brexit deal with the EU as well as what the difficulties in doing this are. That being said, there are also a small number of positive signs as well. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So I think it's fair to say that pretty much every sector in our economy has been urging the government to renegotiate the trade and cooperation agreement with the EU. They're not interested in the other trade deals or CPTPP membership. For most businesses who have any trade outside the EU, we may as well have them as not, but they're not coming close to compensating for the damage of our extreme Tory Brexit. Farmers want a better deal, fishermen want a better deal, the chemical industry, pharmaceutical industry, the manufacturing sector, with car manufacturers being the latest to reiterate calls for a better deal. Everyone wants the deal improved. Nobody thinks that our piss poor deals around the world are a worthwhile reason not to get a better deal with the EU. However, what are the prospects of getting a better deal? The Conservatives don't seem interested in pursuing much in the way of improvements to their own deal, but Keir Starmer keeps talking up his ambition to get a much closer arrangement. So, uh, well, that's good, isn't it? At least for after the election. Well, the desire is useful. It certainly uh, pulls apart from what the Conservatives are offering. But what can he actually achieve? Let's look at the general situation before drilling down to a few specifics. So the first question to ask is, how would a Labour government get a better trade deal with the EU? There are basically two options. The first is to essentially ask the EU to do us a favour. In other words, beg for one. Well, I'm sure the folks in the EU Commission are terribly nice people. In fact, I have uh, a lot of respect for Deputy Commission President Maros Shevchovic. He showed a great deal of good humour and optimism when having to deal with cretins like David Frost and Liz Truss while sorting out the practical arrangements for the Northern Ireland Protocol. But we have declared ourselves a competitor to the EU and a competitor on their doorstep. More than that, the Brexit trade barriers that we threw up have allowed no small amount of investment to leave the UK and travel to several EU member states. Now, although I'm sure that a more openly cooperative approach from Labour will yield some good faith benefits, I don't think they're going to extend towards negotiating a substantially better trade deal for us. In other words, I'm not sure begging is going to get us very far. The second way to get a better deal would be to incentivise it in the way that all negotiations are supposed to work. You give us this thing that we really want and in return we'll give you that thing that you really want. So what is the prospect for this? Well, at first sight, quite tricky. In purely trade negotiations, we don't really have a leg to stand on. First, we are the smaller market. So all other things being equal, in trying to negotiate better access to the EU market, we would have to offer proportionally more into our market to balance out the value of the proposal. But all of the things are not equal. We have a problem in that the EU are applying full customs and standards controls, including checks, to our exports. We're not doing the same to theirs. The government now have plans to do so, but they've always got plans to do so. They're a bit sketchy at best and they're not currently in place. The result of this is that EU businesses can already export to Britain without that much hassle. They do have to deal with customs controls. We do, in theory, have customs controls, but there are very few checks because our government has prioritised traffic flow over controlling our trade borders. Whereas we've seen what happens when traffic gets a bit much to Dover, don't we? The French are not going, oh, let a load of stuff through for the sake of traffic flow. It's like, no, we have checks to perform. So when, there's a, a, when there are difficulties on the outbound traffic from Britain to the EU, there's going to be a spanner in the works. There's going to be blockages, going to be delays maybe for a day or two. On the other way in, the British government have taken the view we need to maintain traffic flow. We need those imports and we will, we will sacrifice checks if necessary. So that's not really putting us on the same footing. But we're not actually requiring EU exporters to deal with standards controls at all. Granted, that is supposed to change in the next year. We've got like at the end of October, one phase is supposed to be coming in. 
But unless we can apply full customs and standards controls to EU exports to mirror those applied by the EU to our exports, without shooting ourselves in the foot in the process, which is tricky, we don't really have much leverage in negotiations. In fact, we don't really have any leverage in negotiations. So the prospect of getting a substantially better deal looks bleak. Now, it may not be completely hopeless because in purely trade terms, we don't really have we don't really have anything to negotiate with. However, there's no reason why the negotiations have to be on purely trade terms. What the UK wants is better trading relations with the EU. If we can't offer the EU better trading relations with us in return because we're already giving it to them on a plate, then is there something else we can offer? Well, the full-scale invasion of basically the largest country in Europe is a major concern for the EU, of course. The EU, remember, has its foundations in the European peace process and the entire structure is based on making peace prosperous for its members. Conversely, war is ruinous to that prosperity. The UK has the joint largest military in Europe and although other European powers should be waking up to the fact they need to look more carefully at whether their defence budgets are really enough, Few seem keen on substantially increasing them. Labour have said that they would want a close security agreement with the EU and the EU similarly did not want security cooperation with the UK ending with Brexit. So there may be scope for boosting that uh, security agreement a bit. You know, with the UK having the potentially given itself a stronger hand when it comes to European security cooperation to partially balance the stronger position the EU are in on trade. It will only partially balance it, of course, because to what extent that will help, I, I can't say. But the EU will be taking Russia's threat more seriously now, and they will want a long-term plan to counter it in the future. Appeasement has, not for the first time in European history, been shown to be a bit of a dud policy. And whatever long-term plans the EU decide to adopt will be a whole lot stronger with the UK involved. Now, in terms of more specific improvements, there are, of course, renegotiations which are going to happen. Like, if Keir Starmer wants to negotiate a particular concession, the EU can just go, uh, no. But there are some things that are going to be renegotiated. They were planned for in parts of the Trade and Cooperation Agreement. This is not a concession from the EU, something that was baked into the original deal. Now, I took it at the time, and I said as much on this channel, that that is a positive sign. It's a sign that the EU wanted to come to a closer arrangement with us, that this very bad trade deal, although it looked like it was loaded very much in the interest of the EU, was not really in the interest of the EU long term. They didn't see it that way. After all, Johnson didn't seem particularly keen on continuing negotiations. Indeed, he promised an end to them in the 2019 general election. So I took the short term nature of some of the provisions in the TCA as a sign that the EU expected if not a change of government by 2025, then at least the Conservative government deciding that it needed a more pragmatic approach. Indeed, with recent events, it's hard to say that they would have been proven wrong. And consider the date. So the provisions with the TCA are up for renegotiation beginning in 2025, some of them in 2026, but beginning in 2025. Now, that was always going to be after the following general election. If the general election ran its maximum course, 2025 would still mean there would have been another general election in this country, come what may. So the EU were basically expecting the UK government that followed that election to increase its overall levels of sanity, which is why they set a date of 2025, which, as I say, I always found to be an encouraging sign. It's also, interestingly, times to happen after the current EU commission is replaced. So it will be completely different politicians dealing with the negotiations on both the UK and EU sides. Obviously, it would all have to be ratified by the EU Parliament, which may be, you know, in many cases, largely the same. Some of the issues coming up for negotiation will be on fishing, personal data, energy, financial services to an extent. They're not all scheduled for the same time, as I say, or even for the same year. Um, Keir Starmer will be aiming to tie them in with other negotiations as well, I think. It remains to be seen how keen the EU are on doing that. But it might make sense for our next government to run talks where we're in a weak position in parallel with ones where we're in a stronger position. But regardless of what we might bring to the table, remember our strongest position was when we were in the EU. 
We were members with all the benefits that brought. There were aspects of Brexit which were as predictable as the dawn, but others that were worryingly unpredictable for all involved. We are no longer members. Everyone has seen that Brexit is a complete disaster for the UK. You know, one of the things that worried the EU, of course, was Britain being seen to benefit from Brexit, because then that might increase calls in some other EU member states. That's completely off the table now. Even far-right parties in major European countries who openly backed their own exit from the EU have now basically abandoned those policies. National Front in France going, uh, oh no, we're not a Brexit party. Whatever gave you that impression? Well, you said you were. Oh yeah, we've changed our minds. We hate the EU still, but we should probably be inside it. So the EU can calm down over that one. Brexit has been a complete disaster for the UK. Nobody else wants to go through with it. Some parts of the EU have benefited from extra business as well, whether that be British companies relocating some of their business to the Netherlands or Ireland, or whether it be foreign investment uh, loading up on Germany or France, whether it be ports in France benefiting from the extra shipping lanes set up with Ireland to avoid the Britain land bridge, whether it be the financial services like Euro clearing leaving London for other EU financial centres. You know, there have been actual Brexit benefits to some parts of the EU and all at the expense of the UK. In order for the UK to get a closer trading arrangement with the EU, we are going to be effectively asking the EU to stem the flow of investment away from Britain towards itself. That doesn't make good business, does it? That is not in the EU's interest. You know, no... <laughs> So I don't think we can hope for the EU to take pity on us. This is business. If we want to reverse the movement of investment from Britain to the EU, we are going to have to offer the EU something in return which is worth at least as much to them. That is the problem which Labour will have to solve to make good on their ambition. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships and until next time, I'll see you later.